Virgo and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the astrology of 2023. And uh, oh boy, it's going to be a huge year, a huge, huge year astrologically. So let's dive into it. So uh, it's going to be a huge year because uh, we've got three major pay players, Saturn, Jupiter and Pluto. They are all changing sign. Now, Saturn does that every two and a half years. And this time around is moving into the sign of Pisces. Jupiter will move into Taurus, the sign of money. And Pluto, that's going to be the biggest change. After 20 years being in Capricorn, is going to move into the sign of Aquarius. Uh, it will retrograde back to the sign of Capricorn, although it, it will give us a, a, a tiny little glimpse um, about what can we expect for the next 20 years to come whilst Pluto is going to stay in the sign of Aquarius. As usual, we do have three Mercury retrogrades and uh, these are very important for you, dear Virgo, as Mercury is your ruler planet. So for you, this carries a little bit more meaning than to everybody else. Then we've got Venus retrograde uh, in the sign of Leo. Um, and then uh, this happens in the summer. And last but not least, the karmic nodes of the moon, uh, the point of destiny, they are also going to change sign and they're going to move into Aries and Libra respectively. So stay with me all the way to the end um, because we really need to unpick all of that. Now, I'm using tropical as a zodiac, um, but I do like to uh, take some of Vedic astrology as well as Western astrology, Western traditional astrology. But I do use whole sign house systems, so please look at your horoscopes like that. I suggest to watch it for your rising sign primarily because this will give you the most accurate prediction. However, it is always advisable to watch it for your sun and for your moon sign as well, because these carry extremely important information about your career for the sun and about your home life. And of course, the most important emotional well-being. And this is going to be your moon sign. Now, finally, if you would like to have a PDF format of this horoscope, please do go on my website and become a member. It is free for this moment of time, uh, but with that, you will be able to download a PDF format uh, where you can have all the dates in your diary, etc., etc. So, without further ado, let's dive into it. So let's begin with chronological order with Saturn moving into uh, Pisces and this takes place in your seventh house, dear, uh, dear Virgo. Now Saturn in the seventh house does have somewhat uh, a bad reputation. Um, Saturn brings, we know, difficult days and long life lessons to into the house and into the sign at, at, that it moves into. And so this time around, it moves into sensitive Pisces. Um, so Pisces doesn't like Saturn being there. It is a, a water sign, is very emotional, very dreamy. Uh, its nature couldn't be further away that of Saturn. Um, so here Saturn, um, probably very harshly, is going to test uh, your faith, your beliefs um, in matters of seventh house, such as uh, marriage, partnership, uh, which can be personal partnerships, such as your long-term relationship, of course, but it could be a business partnership as well. Now, if you haven't got any of them, then uh, it could be your clientele. And if you haven't got those ones either, it could just be your audience uh, or other people. So the areas, these areas are going to be affected and you are going to be challenged to deal with these upcoming issues for the next two and a half years. Yes, this is how long Saturn is going to stay in the sign of Pisces. So whatever I'm saying now, uh, this is going to affect you for the next two and a half year. Although Saturn for 2023, it is only going to move um, 
to the beginning degrees of Pisces. So perhaps um, those of you who you've got your sun or your moon or your um, ascendant, your rising sign uh, in the early degrees of Pisces, those of you will feel this uh, a little bit stronger than others. So you might be called upon to put a lot of effort into managing your partnerships, whether they are personal or whether they are the business ones. Uh, all sorts of relationships are uh, going to be tested uh, now with limitations, with duties, with being responsible, um, with obstacles. All of your relationships, your long-term partnerships are going to be tested with a reality check. Now, there will be some demands and some ultimatums or some rules imposed upon you uh, by another person, which is most likely your partner, your partner in life or your partner in business. Uh, or if you haven't got any one of them, just other people generally or your audience. Now, if this is a business relationship, this might actually work out quite well um, because Saturnian lessons are all about to become more responsible, more mature, more disciplined, more hardworking, more business oriented, okay? Uh, Well-structured. And, uh, but Saturn does that with a little bit, you know, Saturn's, uh, Saturnian lessons are a little bit, a little bit harsh. A little bit are heavy handed. Um, they hold you accountable. Um, you know, so someone uh, probably will be pushing you to apply yourself, to be more accountable, to have responsibilities uh, or your relationship, uh, your responsibilities in relationships may uh, increase. You do have to uh, do your fair share though in a relationship, you know, uh, this will be on demand. Um, uh, but the work can be somewhat draining, somewhat repetitive, uh, strenuous, uh, especially for personal relationships. Um, you might feel some sort of distance uh, that appears in a relationship, um, maybe due to the uh, lack of time or due to the increased amount of responsibilities. Now, with Saturn in the seventh house, uh, it does have a bad rap. Um, but it, it shouldn't have to because seven house is a Libra house and Saturn is actually exalted in a Libra. Um, so um, if this is a good relationship, uh, it will survive this transit, uh, but nevertheless, it will be tested. Uh, Saturn, however, does remove all the people who are unnecessary, all the relationships that are not there for you to serve you in the long term, uh, and we all know those sort of couples who, you know, they just uh, stay together for the sake of being together, for the sake of keep, uh, keeping the status quo, for the sake of keeping the family happy, and so on and so forth. So those relationships, usually, they do break off during a Saturnian time. Saturn is the time of Lord. So whenever Saturn comes around, it is the time to to clear off what doesn't serve you uh, you know it's like doing um like a, a big um spring clean in in those terms of uh, of issues such as relationships when Saturn comes around uh, because we need to see what serves you and what doesn't anymore and what doesn't uh, needs to be eliminated now on the other hand or if you have a, a good relationship Saturn will still still going to test you. It's still going to uh, give you a, a certain, uh, you know, responsibilities, extra duties, repetitive hard work, some demands, some testing, some obstacles, some limitations. Uh, however, due to this, your commitment will go on to another level. Because after all, Saturn is the planet of um of commitments is the planet of longevity um so well you will see which end of the spectrum you are going to fall but i'm sure that deep down in your heart you do know whether your relationship uh is up to survive this period or not whether your relationship is a good one um it will be able to get to the next level of commitment or not okay now Please keep in mind that you will have to put repeated effort into your marriage. So, um, and, and there's no need to complain about it um, because 
Saturn just, you know, it, it's a little bit like, a, you know, that teacher who will hear uh, the children complaining and um, uh, that angers him or her, and it gives you even harder lessons. Uh, so don't do it. Just accept that this is, uh, it is what it is. Uh, you now have to do a little bit of extra effort. You have to go the extra mile. You have to do the extra responsibilities. It's dutiful. It's repetitive. It's dull. Um, but you got to do it uh, to strengthen, to keep it going, um, to, to make it long term. And this shall will pass. Um, with Saturn, especially if it's in a neg, uh, not uh, I wouldn't want to say it's a negative sign because Pisces is anything but negative, negative. Um, but um, Saturn doesn't really like to be in Pisces, as I said. Um, Saturn and Pisces, they are they couldn't be further away from each other. You know, Pisces is that dreamy, uh, banderless um, uh, sign, whereas Saturn is actually is the planet of boundaries, keeping the boundaries. Uh, keeping the structure uh, so they are very 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 opposite in nature um so um expect some hardships some some um, hard lessons uh, some extra effort that you are going to have to deal with um you know to become more realistic about your partnership um this is not not it is not going to be the Saturn will not let you be lovey-dovey and all dreamy uh, Saturn wants you to become more realistic about your partnership. Can you do, can both of you do this for the long term? Are you both really up for it? And believe me, if you do the hard work, Saturn, Saturn, Saturnian rewards are just as good as the lesson was hard. They are very tangible, okay? Uh, it's not just a feeling, I mean. It's something tangible that you get with the Saturnian rewards, uh, a long-lasting uh, but the effort has to be put in. And, and during this two and a half year, it feels like um, it feels like an endless well that your effort is going into and uh, nothing ever happens. But, uh, um, you know, if you follow astrology, uh, you will know that this also shall end after the two and a half year. And especially if Saturn moves over the degrees um, that, um, you know, you have your sun, your moon or your ascendant, it will give you a, a relief for sure. So as a result, you then you will have, um, you know, a, a sense of uh, having more boundaries. And this is also very important in relationships, as we know. You have a more crystallized idea that who you really, really want and who you really need as well. Um, if you are single, due to all of that, you, you know, Saturn is also the, the planet of manifestation. Uh, so due to that, so if you are single now, uh, Saturn can manifest, um, uh, you know, uh, it due to these crystallized ideas that you have about you, your relationship, you are able to attract um, perhaps someone Saturnian, so like uh, maybe uh, someone older. Um, these people usually uh, are, you know, uh, are older um, Saturnian, a step older than us, so 7, 14 or even 28 <laughs> Yes, you know, these are the Saturnian cycle. They are, these people are more realistic. They are more responsible. Uh, they are more decent as well. And so due to having this deeper understanding, you might be able to attract someone like that. Uh, so some of the positives and negatives of having Saturn uh, transiting your seventh house. So let's begin first with the positives. Uh, you can get married. And if you do plan to get married, this is an excellent time to get married because the relationship is bound to be uh, long lasting and committed. Uh, it is a good time to make a commitment as well. Now, Saturn, as I said, it can end a failed relationship. And if that's the case, you need to understand that you need to let that relationship go because uh, it otherwise it would be just, um, you know, a, a dragging on and a waste of time for both parties. Uh, nobody's benefiting from that. So Saturn is not going to let you that. Uh, not, uh, Saturn is not going to let you do that. Now, it is a good time to establish a business partnership uh, because you can meet the expectations of others. Uh, it is also a very good time to, uh, for you to be recognized for your skills and talents. Now, you need to watch out for hanging on to an unhealthy relationship. As I said, if Saturn will break it off, uh, there's no need to do that because uh, these are usually permanent, okay? Uh, there could be a time for divorce 
for those ones who, again, I mentioned before, lacking the, the true sense and the true deep uh, depth of the relationship. Uh, it could be a time of being isolated and withdrawn from other people. Um, and it could be also a time where you really uh, avoiding confrontations. And then end of March, Pluto will move into Aquarius. And as I mentioned, that is going to be a change of a, an era. It is going to be the biggest change of our century, perhaps. Uh, Pluto is a generational planet and its effect uh, felt more on the collective consciousness, but it does affect you on the individual level too. Now, in Aquarius, which is the sign of rebellion and technology, Pluto is going to unearth the unrealized potential of technology for the next 20 years to come. Now, in your personal chart, however, Pluto will just dip his toe into Aquarius, which takes place in your sixth house of health uh, and work and the sixth house of service as well. Uh, so uh, here it will, uh, as I said, just uh, dip his toe into your house position and it will give you a taste of what and how is going to unfold for the next 20 years to come uh, in your house of health. Uh, so with that is also recommended to do a big health checkup. Uh, I don't want to scare anybody, but it is a health house and Pluto is a deep transformation. Uh, so something uh, for the next 20 years definitely uh, will, will, you know, something will manifest. Now, the unearthing of the truth and the unfolding power issues uh, and transformations through crisis uh, is going to show its face in your uh, sixth house of health, work, and service. Then we'll have a Mercury retrograde in Gemini uh, and uh, in Taurus as well. Um, so as I said, it is a, a, a very important time for you, dear Virgo, because Mercury is your ruler planet. Um, and so in the house of career, uh, it could be a time uh, for a great fluctuation. Uh, you might end up throwing the, in the towel and resign suddenly because maybe your purpose has changed and you no longer feel aligned. Now you could be also reappointed by a superior to a place where you can achieve more for all parties. Now it is also it is also a good time to resign or perhaps retire uh, if you are that age or if you are on that path from one particular calling that you have had. Uh, your public image uh, that's also the tense house need revamping uh, because your reputation needs to mirror the professional persona that you are and that needs some rethinking and reorganizing. Now. Mercury, then it will backtrack to your ninth house. And so this is the house of beliefs uh, and faith and higher knowledge. So during these weeks, uh, you need to perhaps reconsider offering travel or maybe retake an exam or revisit the theory and ideology of yours. It is going to be a good time to look into the details of, um, you know, with regards to your ideology, with regards to your beliefs, is very important because uh, these will serve your higher purpose um, once Mercury uh, will go direct again. It is a good time to revision your faith, your understanding of life, because what you believe, it will become your reality. It is, it is a good time to expand and explore your horizons through retraining your mind through books, studies, uh, or perhaps meeting with uh, different cultures or different um, people with different backgrounds uh, from yours. So then we'll have Jupiter moving into Taurus uh, in, around the same time as uh, Mercury, uh, your ruler planet retrograding in Taurus as well. Uh, so revisiting those ninth house issues that I mentioned are going to be even more important because then the Jupiterian rewards uh, can come only after you've revisited those issues. Now, let's talk about Jupiter first. Jupiter is the largest and the luckiest planet of all. It is the planet of expansion, growth, and optimism. And it has a reputation of blessing us with good luck and good fortune. Uh, Jupiter um, 
And Jupiter does that with ease. Jupiter is expanding on our wealth and uh, on our minds as well. It is associated with a higher mind, a philosophy, truth, religion. It gives us a larger lens through which we can view the world. Now, Taurus, on the other, other hand, Taurus is an earth sign and it is the most material signs of all. Uh, therefore, uh, Taurus rules uh, themes such as wealth, money, comfort, food, everything that the earth gives us, everything that we can achieve through patience, practicality, uh, and being headstrong as well. Uh, no, we all know that Taurus is a fixed sign because you cannot give up those goals if you want to achieve. Now, the, the planet of luck is coming into this material Earth sign. Uh, it will definitely bring expansion into these themes, such as money, food, sensual pleasures, and comfort. And so this definitely sounds, sounds like a good news in the midst of record recessions uh, since records ever began. Uh, at least when I'm making this video, that's what we are living through. Now, your ability to grow, to create wealth and wisdom is coming from the sign where Jupiter moves into and the house as well. And so this one is going to be your Taurus house, which is taking place in your ninth house. So what does that mean? It means that you can manifest. You can manifest with ease and inspiration. You see how different Jupiter is from Saturn. Um, Saturn will manifest you with the hard work, being disciplined, responsible, hardworking, whereas Jupiter will manifest with ease, wisdom, and inspiration. Um, now, Jupiter will manifest through the ninth house, okay, such as high learning, such as university, international affairs, inter international travels, your beliefs, your philosophy. You will have opportunities to travel abroad uh, so you can expand your mind uh, because this is the house of concepts. Uh, this is the house of ideology and beliefs. You will start believing in yourself more. Uh, you will start in believing uh, to manifest uh, material assets, how you can create wealth, how you can create material comfort for yourself. Uh, maybe you might find a teacher, a guru, an inspirational figure who can teach you how to manifest these things. Okay, Jupiter is a teacher. Nice house is also the house of teachers as well. So there's a quite high chance for that. Um, you will look up to these people who you will find uh, and, and these people will become some sort of mentors in your life, a benevolent helper th that can appear in your life uh, in the form of human. Uh, now you can look up to these people and become somewhat, uh, um, they become somewhat like a mentor in your life, like a benevolent helper. And uh, these will appear in the shape of a human. So uh, you don't need to, you know, look for angels or anything like that. They will appear such as a mentor, a teacher, benevolent helper. Uh, uh, and these people, you will recognize them because uh, they will teach you. Uh, they will be like a guru in your life who will, um, you know, bring new belief system to you uh, who will bestow the faith uh, that you have in your capability to manifest uh, to manifest what Dorian themes uh, of wealth and comfort okay uh, you will get very excited about that you will wake up with inspiration and wisdom <coughs> uh, I'm sorry um for my horse voice and uh, ever since Mars has gone retrograde in my first house uh, I'm just uh, stricken with illness and um, two days ago my voice completely disappeared so I'm just happy to have it back. Uh, so you will get very excited about that um, you will have uh, lots of lots of you know inspirational feelings. The nice house is such a beautiful house and, and Jupiter um, you know it's a natural house of Jupiter because it's the house of Sagittarius the archer uh, which is the ruler of, uh, of um, you know, S S Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius. Um, so you will have all this inspiration and wisdom towards your future goals, um, your, you know, your beliefs in your beliefs and your capabilities to manifest 
those Taurian themes of wealth and money. Now, the ninth house is also connected to your vision for yourself, uh, for your future, and Jupiter will restore your wisdom, your faith, and your beliefs in here. So that is going to be a true blessing. So now, now we're going to move into Aries and Libra. And um, well, not we, but the nodes of the moon are going to move into there uh, on midsummer, the 13th of July. Um, now, the north of the destiny dictates where we are moving into, which is uh, can be like a scary place because we've never been here before. It is the house of, um, sorry, it is the it's the point of our future karma, and it changes time every two, um, so every eighteen months, like one and a half year. So for the time being, uh, your future karma is going to be um, the eighth house. Okay, now in this other hand, the south node of destiny, which is always opposite um, the north node, uh, is depicts a place, an energy, an emotion, perhaps a relationship as well, that have been part of your past life. Uh, it feels very comforting, it feels very familiar, uh, it, it could be a part of your talent as well, uh, but it is a karmic energy that you need to move out from, you need to release uh, more, uh, leave behind during this one and a half uh, year. Of, so you will be more apathetic towards um, those issues. Now, the, uh, the South Node takes place, or Ketu, uh, in Vedic Astrology takes place in the second house of your earnings in Libra. Now with Rahu and the North Node of the Moon, the area of the growth, uh, it's going to be the area of your eighth house of shared resources, sexuality, secrets, and other people's money. It is also the house of transformation, sudden changes, and crisis as well. Secrets too. Now, wherever Rahu goes, uh, we usually uh, receive something or the effects of the house will be uh, further amplified, Okay. According to Western astrology, Rahu is like Jupiter, you know, it uh, creates expansion. However, uh, it is also, um, it's, it's much more than that. Um, it is very materialistic. Uh, it's very ambitious energy. It is very uh, insatiable energy. It's a little bit obsessed. It's a little bit fake as well. Uh, it's full of mistakes because as I said, imagine this energy of the toddler who keeps going forward, keeps falling down, making mistakes because, uh, you know, the road is very unfamiliar. So the eighth house is the house of finances and those finances that uh, we didn't have to work for. Uh, but it's also the house of sudden changes, transformation, transformation, especially through death uh, and birth or, or even rebirth. Uh, now, this indicates that there will be powerful and big changes, big transformations that are going to occur, and they're almost going to occur um, as of they are out of control, because, you know, Rahu is the point of destiny. Um, Rahu is the point of destiny, and... Um, and we humans, we don't like it because we feel that we haven't got control over something. Um, but we definitely haven't got control over Rahu, for sure. Um, the changes are going to be a bit shocking, exhilarating, and very, very, very sudden. Uh, all the eclipses for the next uh, two and a half, uh, one and a half year, for the next 18 months, are going to happen in your financial axis, uh, dear Virgo. And so get ready for fated endings and great new beginnings uh, in these areas. Uh, now, the fated endings are going to happen most likely um, in your second house. Um, but new beginnings are going to happen in your eighth house as well of shared resources, because obviously for new beginnings, you have to end something first, right? Now, in a material sense, you are definitely going to benefit from this influence, especially now that, you know, you have all this knowledge that Jupiter bestowed upon you uh, in the ninth house. Uh, now, this uh, anyway, this could come in a form of inheritance. This could come in a good investment in the stock market. As I said, you will learn how to deal with and how to manifest money. Uh, the eight house rules, death. Um, so, you know, as I said, it can come as an inheritance as well. 
um, it could come as interest money as well. So maybe a, a sudden uh, accident will happen to you. Um, you know, a little accident. Don't worry, you're not going to die from from this um, um, from this uh, transit. Um, which then in return, uh, it brings you a nice sum of interest money to be paid out. So anyhow, um, the money, it will be such that you didn't, you know, you didn't have to work for. On another manifestation could be that you receive a big payout due to a reverse as any money or perhaps a child support. Either, either way, the money is going to be connected to a crisis situation. So at first, it might feel very sudden, um, might feel very fated, um, uh, and it might come through a crisis situation, as I said. Um, another manifestation, your partner can suddenly, uh, you know, make more money and you will benefit from it as well. Uh, maybe, and, and maybe he will start earning through a sudden change. Um, that first appeared as a crisis situation that you have to had to navigate through uh, but what something you need to understand that uh, the north and the south node of the moon they will put you right back on your on the track that you have chosen um, before you came into this body before you came into this incarnation so whatever happens just keep in mind that although it feels fated, it feels as if they are happening out of your, your control, you have already agreed uh, on these ones um, before um, your birth. Now, Rahu and AIDS house can also increase your sexual appetite uh, very insatiably. Uh, so therefore, you can fall pregnant uh, if that's the path uh, you're walking on. And it is uh, also a great time to apply for mortgages and loans because, as I said, uh, you will get material um, benefit from it. You know, and mortgages and loans are also money that you didn't have to work for. In the same time, the point of destiny uh, that uh, the south node of the moon uh, is uh, is in the house of your earning. Uh, and so that suggests that you have to let go of some sort of income that you have had so far, um, uh, maybe a possession or some assets that you have had so far because simply they don't serve you anymore. Uh, they are actually, um, when south node goes in there in your second house, um, they became somewhat a burden already. So this also could be a part of that crisis situation that I, um, you know, that you have to suffer, um, that you have to suffer a loss of income. Um, but do not worry because something else will come in, uh, some sort of money that you did not even have to work for, as I mentioned before. Now, the second house is also rules the, the food that we eat. And so you need, to, uh, you need to look at your diet, the food that you have been eating so far, because something needs to be eliminated there, okay? It is, uh, you know, whatever South Node is, this is the time of cleansing, excretion of some sort needs to happen um, in your house of earnings, food, comfort, and the house of security as well. So then Venus is going to go retrograde in your 12th house and that's going to happen end of July. It's going to be the in the Leo season, um, end of July and throughout the month of August and the beginning of September. So the Venus retrograde is especially important this year because it, uh, uh, you know, Venus rules over Jupiter uh, because Jupiter is in Taurus and Venus rules Taurus. Now, when Venus goes retrograde, we have to go back and we have to reassess um, a Venusian themes such as relationships, uh, money, art, beauty, uh, material assets, um, uh, even friendships, especially with women. Um, now, with going through and reassessing, we often find things that are no longer working and have no meaning in the future going forward. Now, in the sign of Leo, this could be uh, connected to children, connected to lovers, um, the way you have fun, but also because uh, it's in your 12th house, um, it, it's also uh, could be connected to a secretive activity, uh, could be connected to your subconscious mind, spirituality, activities that are happening uh, behind closed doors, away from the public. When Venus is retrograde, uh, and this uh, happens for approximately 40 days, every 18 months or so, we are called to reevaluate, reassess the themes 
connected to um, to Venus, but also connected to your uh, to your specific chart um, that is a ruling, you know, that are ruled by Venus, uh, such as this time around for you, it is the ninth house where Taurus uh, is with Jupiter. And it's also the second house, uh, which is the house of your earnings. Um, so, you know, with that excretion, you are already called to um, do some elimination, some reassessing. Uh, what is that you need to excrete? You know, and this, of course, in the same time when um, uh, the North Node, oh, sorry, the South Node will be in your second house. So it will right start of the summer with you having to reassess your financial situations more likely. Now, this could be also a time when you have to radically change something because Venus is going to square Uranus throughout this season. And so uh, with Venus square Uranus, there's always a radical change, a very unexpected uh, one as well very unconventional as well as uh, something that um, actually <coughs> that breaks off the tradition so as i said because venus rules uh, your ninth house where jupiter is um it, it could be that um it could be that before jupiter is going to be able to give the material benefits uh some reassessment of finances uh connected to foreign countries and connected to import expert have to be done first. And I'm saying that because the 12th house also is somewhat connected to a faraway lands, foreign lands of some sort, and Jupiter is in your ninth house of, of a similar meaning house, such as international travels and foreign lands. So uh, you might need to look at your finances that are coming from uh, a foreign place or some possibilities that could some finances could be coming from a foreign place as well uh, and there might be some you might be called to do some radical changes with regards to these sort of finances now Venus uh, goes retrograde in the same time every eight years or so uh, so maybe if you go back if you still remember what happened uh, eight years ago uh, when Venus uh, was uh, also going retrograde in the sign of Leo in the same position uh, you are likely to uh, so even from eight years ago financials or relationship wise are likely to be um, needing to be examined again to see what approach uh, have shift or illuminate the issues further uh, problems that you have been ignored and shoved under the carpet now um, they are going to be connected to your earnings to your beliefs to your studies to the expansion of the mind uh, through international travel and they will need your attention uh, and also your action now now on another level the 12th house is also associated with things hidden and secretive, more private matters in your life. This is also the house of undoing, a place of confinement, uh, a place of non-visible ailments such as mental health. So Venus retrograde transiting through the natal 12th house may have you reassessing how much time uh, you are needing for solitude, how much time you are needing to retreat, um, in your life, uh, maybe reassessing some matters that uh, have been connected to secretive and hidden, uh, hidden activities, maybe needing you to reassess a relationship that was secretive and hidden from other people. And a, a different manifestation is that you also come uh, could come up with uh, totally unconventional ideas, become very flirtatious with people who are indeed very different from your traditional environment. An ex-partner, ex-lover of yours may reappear in your life, uh, but only to sort out some past issues. And they may be also, you know, these are also probably happening behind the scenes. Uh, maybe one or the uh, one of you are, you know, having a, a, a committed relationship. And so because of that, uh, they cannot be happening in the public. Uh, but it's never a good idea to rekindle a relationship, an ex a relationship uh, during uh, the Venus retrograde, because once Venus changes sign, uh, sorry, to, uh, Venus changes direction, hearts will have changed as well. 
then? So then Mercury is going to um, go retrograde again uh, in your sign, dear Virgo. And this is also going to happen in August until uh, mid-September. So for you, this uh, Mercury retrograde uh, again is very important, not only because the messenger planet rules you, but also because uh, it is happening uh, during the Virgo season. So when, you know, that's happening when the sun is in there as well. And so the focus is even bigger. Uh, the sun illuminates the house that you are in. And this time around, the sun is going to illuminate your first house because that's where it's all happening. So during a Mercury retrograde, Mercury always asks you to reassess certain situations. Uh, and these are going to be Virgo themes. Virgo themes of uh, health, for, for example, daily routines, daily chores, your duties, uh, your everyday work that you are doing, <clears throat> your diet as well. Um, it's um, the house of service as well, the house of work. Uh, so you need to reassess all of these themes. Now, because it is happening in your first house of physical appearance, now you also need to rethink how you show yourself in the world. And this could be anything to do with your physical body, your hairstyle, the way you express yourself, the entire outlook of yours, the entire image of yours. This is also this is also associated with your life path, your actions and your instinctual behavior. So all of this needs to be, um, you know, rethought. Um, you need to ask questions such as, are your actions in sync with your true calling? Uh, because it has come the time now when you can and need to revamp your image, okay? The person who you really are. Uh, after this period, you will have come out with a renewed self-confidence and with a new sense of direction. Now, the final big aspect that is worth mentioning in the year of 2023 is going to be Mercury going retrograde uh, in the sign of Sagittarius. And this is going to cover uh, the entire holiday season of uh, December, from 3rd of December to the 1st of um, sorry, the 1st of January, I believe. And this is going to happen in your first house in the sign of Sagittarius. So uh, you know that your home is your castle. And so it is going to be a time to reestablish your sense of belonging, uh, to revisit those fundamental values that you've had. Sagittarius energy is about learning, expanding your mind, uh, looking at things from a broader perspective. Uh, Mercury will, but because we're talking about Mercury here, Mercury wants to look at the details as well because uh, it could have been something that you missed. And so that's why you need to uh, go back. Uh, the fourth house, uh, Mercury is also connected to, to selling. Um, to, uh, with sales and, and marketing um, so if this is uh, if we're not talking about your house it could be a house or a property that you are marketing making lots of telephone calls a lot of paperwork with regards to those and so something with regards to these may need to be looked at it again now, if you are not in the property business, uh, then it's more likely it's going to be connected to your own home, your own house. So maybe it is going to be a time to reorganize certain things at your home, to look at the paperwork, uh, maybe some important contracts need to be uh, looked at again. Uh, it could be a time of re decorating, refurbishing your living environment. Uh, so it once again, it will be a place where you can recharge your batteries, but it will give you <clears throat> a little feeling of exuberance as well, uh, with a touch of a different culture, a place of living, or a touch of, um, you know, Mercury, sorry, Sagittarius has got this um, larger than life feeling as well. So something with regards to that as well needs to be looked at again. Um, need to have some time uh, spent with reflection as well. Now, perhaps you are longing for some fresh chi in your sanctuary, so energies can flow freely once again. Uh, fill your well with nourishment and schedule in a feng shui ex uh, consultation uh, so your home will be shining in a different light. Um, 
for your visitors for the holiday season, um, for the ex, uh, expand, uh, extended relations as well, or perhaps somebody from a foreign culture. So this was my analysis of next year's astrology, dear Virgo. I hope that this could, this could help. I'm very interested. Please put your comments down below. Um, is this uh, in alignment with your plans? Uh, is this helping you somewhat? Yes, so I'm looking forward to reading your comments, looking forward to connecting with you. Of course, I also offer personal consultations. Um, thank you very much. If I haven't told you already, please subscribe and like this video as well. Thank you very much for watching till the very end. I wish you a very happy and prosperous new year. Bye-bye.